So today we are celebrating Chhat Puja day one. I wish everyone here a happy Chhat Puja 2023. On a new day, I'm going to explain to you today about crafting complex software objects in software development. In my experience, and by the way, I'm talking about the real live software code, which is used by millions of people daily, also has lots of lots of unmanaged codes, un maintainable code, which is seriously creating a threat to product extensibility and maintainability. So I assure you that by the end of today's session, you will learn a systematic approach by construct complex object. So without wasting the time, let's deep dive in. All right, let me explain the problem statement for today's discussion. Imagine we are creating a software system for cars designed to cater to a variety of models, each with unique features. This system must handle differences in engine types, transmissions, and additional options like entertainment and navigation system. Our challenge is to make this software adaptable for a range of cars from compact vehicle to luxury SUVs, each requiring a specific functionalities. We need to ensure that the software can be easily modified or expanded to incorporate new features or car models in the future. Maintaining efficiency and reliability without becoming overly complex or difficult to manage for developers and architects. All right, welcome back. So in this segment, um, in the last segment, I already discussed about the problems statement, right? And what exactly is how we can solve. So the first solution, uh, we think that we can create a constructor and pass all these parameters which you need custom as a customization in your solution, right? So you just do a create few constructor according to your choice and so I mean to say that uh, let's say let's say you consider a class which is car software class as an example and where the constructor is overloaded with numerous parameters for the model engine type feature like GPS and entertainment options. Managing the co this complex constructor becomes day by day difficult and leading to error prone code, right? Because it becomes a difficult, it becomes a unmanageable as it grows day by day. And even it will create a problem for new guy who introduced in the, this uh, module or in this uh, project, right? So, and the another part of this I mean, problem is future modification, creating a headache for developers and architect, right? So the challenges with telescopic constructor, and the, by the way, I'm just introducing this term telescopic. This is the, the problem which described by these kind of constructor is called telescope, telescopic constructor. So constructor with many parameters becomes difficult to manage, to understand, leading to complex and confusing code. That is what complexity increased with these kind of constructor. Another key issue you will find here is scalability issue. Adding new features require adding more constructors or parameters, making the code less scalable and harder to maintain, right? So that is the another second key challenges in this mechanism, in this uh, constructor based mechanism. Third is error prone. I mean to say with multiple similar constructor, it is easy to mistake, mistakenly use the wrong type of constructor, which leads to bugs and unintended behavior in the application. And the last challenges of these kind of constructor is poor readability. A large number of parameters makes the code less readable, right? So all these you will find as a challenge if you go for constructor based solution, though the intuitive solution at first sight is constructor only, right? But what are the challenges you also have just listed down. Now, as a good developer, as a good software engineer, your work is to act upon these challenges and try to improve your code so that these challenges will be nullified in your final code. That is what expected from you as a good software developer or good software architect. Okay. Let's move on. Let's come back in the next segment to, to get, solve these challenges in your code. All right. So until now, I hope we all are clear about the challenges with constructor based solution. So we are clear now that this solution, I mean to say constructor based solution will not work for us. Let's pause your video here, give your thought and come back to see the solution step by step. Most of the time you have heard that people are always saying that do modification one by one, meaning solve the problem by tackling one problem at a time. For developer and architect, this is simply building out your solution incrementally or iteratively, right? So intuitively thoughts come in our mind here is what if 
what if we could construct our car step by step, feature by feature, right? With this thought, let's imagine a car builder interface and to build car parts, let's introduce interface like shown in image here, okay? So uh, let's build one concrete class for our I car builder interface class. I'm taking my concrete class name as a sports car builder. But I request you here, please uh, do by own first. I mean, think through by own and then come back here to understand this step. Now in step one here, I'm initializing the car object, very simple. You can see in this image that how we have just initiated, right? So here a sports car builder implements the I car builder interface and initializes a car object, that's it. In step two, I'm building the engine. So the build engine method sets the engine type of the car to V8, which is generally a sports car having engine. So just like for your understanding, you can assign any engine, any type of engine, whatever you know, uh, that doesn't matter. It is only like how you have uh, initiated, how you have implemented your build engine method interface. That is the only importance. Step three is build the wheels. In build wheels, we specify that the sport car will have four wheels. This is a standard number. So, I mean, by that way you can do it. Now, step four is build the seats. Now here, usually a sports car have only two seats and other uh, cars have four seats. So for a sports car, this customization is you have to initialize the car as having only two seats and appropriately you just assign the number of seats and those things right uh, i think yeah yeah so that is what i'm sharing to you now step five is finally finally return the final output of your car a sports car from get result interface implementation right so here these are the five steps you will run and you will after that you will finally get this final class look at this image you will see that what is our final output of a sports car builder class i hope if you follow similar process, you will reach it at this point and now you are very much clear about how you can create your concrete class for I car builder, which you have created the interface class, right? So how you can create concrete class against that interface class. That is what we have learned in this step. Let's come back in the next segment of video. Uh, my next step is to think through in which multiple concrete classes possible here, right? Yeah? So how do you manage these dynamic builder selection in your product construction process? So let's create another class. Let's say its name is car director for now. Okay. You just follow me this with the name also, but there is no hard and fast rule. You can create your own, I mean, name choice also. Uh, so you can choose any name, but for simplicity or for uh, simplicity of understanding purpose, I have created director class, which is generally instructing uh, to someone to build it, right? That is what uh, my assumption is. My main purpose here is to create one class that will help me to construct the final product by delegating their builder process to the appropriate concrete builder class, okay? So if you follow the same with me, then you might reach at similar of output as the car director class shown here. All right, so let's let's summarize again, whatever the step we have learned until now. Uh, one step, which is the car director, and it is built for assembling a car, right? We use a car director to guide the assembly of a car using a sports car builder. This approach, allows flexibility and customizability in car construction. The car director orchestrates the building process, ensuring that the car is built step by step in a controlled manner. Another thing we have achieved, building different types of cars by applying the same car director and just changing or varying builders like a sports car builder, another is family car builder and so on and so forth. We can construct different types of cars this highlights the reusability and versatility of the code allowing for the creation of diverse cars models with minimal changes. Okay. Another important thing here is to note that the way you have constructed the code now, it is reflecting quality of code. The code exemplifies clean coding practices with clear separation of concern and adherence to the single responsibility principle SRP, which is part of solid principle. Each class has a specific role ensuring code maintainability and scalability. Let's look the final output as a UML diagram for our code until now, whatever we reached, okay? So let me share with you the approach we have been learning about known as the builder pattern. Congratulations. Today, you learned builder pattern as one more arsenal in your kitty list, in your award list. The good part here is that you have naturally learned the builder pattern through understanding the principles of good software design and code. I request all of you apply this builder pattern to your projects.
let me know if you find any issues in implementation or scenario understanding so any doubt you have please share me okay thank you so at the end of my video i request everyone shoot your comments feedback or questions by following anywhere like linkedin or maybe youtube video comment feedback anywhere and thank you thank you for completing this video and i hope that you definitely have learned something which will help you in your system design interview hope to see you in next video with new concept and skills needed for the system design interview by then keep learning keep improving and keep sharing your knowledge